Welcome to my YouTube channel where we demonstrate and discuss everything related to theatrical and entertainment production crafts. Please subscribe to get the latest updates, posts, and demonstrations. While I will focus primarily on safety in the shops and comprehensive training and operating procedures for tools and machinery, I'll also demonstrate and discuss practical applications like flat and platform construction, scene painting, and more. If you'd like to see something specific, please let me know in the comments. Once again, please subscribe and power up the alert bell to get the most up-to-date notifications about new content. I've got one more method of leg attachment to demonstrate and show you. This one's a little bit more complex, a little bit more labor intensive, a little bit more materials intensive, but it has some advantages. I encountered this years ago doing summer stock in the East Coast back in the 1997 or so. And I thought it was a bit ridiculous, the amount of work, but I'll share it with you because it's a unique construction style. I'm not sure if anyone really teaches this anymore. The crew I was working with in New Hampshire came out of the Midwest and they learned it from their carpenter and they said this has the advantage of eliminating any squeaks that you have from leg rubbing up against platform leg and lid and all of that. That's the way they were taught in their theater program of the virtues of it. But it's got some other advantages too that I'll, I'll cover. Let's talk about what happens with your normal legs. Let's say I screw my hog's trough here in the corner I put two screws here, I put two screws there in my two by four or from my one by six, I'm screwing from the outside. Either way, it's the same difference. I'm relying 100% on the strength of those screws securing my leg to my frame and that's the integrity of my legging. And if those screws fail, if all four or five of those screws fail, then what's going to happen is this leg is going to push onto the lid and separate the lid from the frame and the whole thing's going to collapse. So I'm really relying on that screw more than I should have, especially when we're using drywall screws. Drywall screws are not designed to be under that constant shear force. We use enough of them so that it kind of spreads it out amongst all of them. It's not just one drywall screw holding that full joint in position. And there's other cross bracing and other structural things too. And now we use construction screws a lot more. So they're a little bit stronger than drywall screws. Although tests have shown that drywall screws are not really any more brittle than most variety of construction screws. They're all going to break under the same kinds of stress loads to varying degrees, depending on the uh, screw type and, and head type and shape and all of that. Remember, drywall screws aren't designed to sink into wood. The shape of that head, that cup shape, is designed to sink and pucker into the paper of drywall sheetrock. And it's not designed to self countersink into wood but the construction screws have more of that type of features and some of them have more advanced features than that. But the general construction screws have a different shaped head and will more likely countersink into the wood material. And that doesn't matter if I'm using a piece of hog straw or if I'm using a two by four, it's, let me put the square end of the two by four down. Uh, it's all the same, whether it's a two by four or a hog straw. It's gonna be the same thing. I'm relying on that screw at least if I bolt, if I machine bolt or uh, carriage bolt, the machine bolt or carriage bolt is not going to break uh, in the same kind of way that those screws might. The machine bolt is a whole heck of a lot stronger than the screws. It's much more reliable and you're not going to have the same issue. This technique is a bit of an odd one, but it puts the leg on the frame and requires a two by four frame with a two by four leg. I don't know if this would work with a one by six frame and a one by six or one by four leg. I think it's just a little too flimsy. I think this kind of works with the two by four or stronger material. And then we take these cleats and we attach the cleat. And the cleat is slightly narrower than the two by four. So this is three and a half. I've ripped this to three inches and it's 
twice the distance of this, so this is three and a half, that's three and a half, so this is seven, so three by seven. I have to put five screws here and I have to put five screws there. So I'm gonna mark it uh, because I know the two by four is gonna just fall out of the way when I do things. I'm using one and five eighths inch screws because I'm going through three quarter inch material into one and a half. So three quarter is what I need to double, one and a half at least. If I want to clamp it, I can clamp it, but I'm just going to hold it in place. basically it. Now you see I do have a little bit of flex in a certain direction and especially if I get a longer leg this is going to have a lot more flex because I'm not really secured here. So it requires that I have to do cross bracing everywhere and that will strengthen this up and become a very strong structure. And now all the weight of the material is going through the plywood into the framing down the leg and I'm not putting any of the stress on these actual screws. It's kind of like the way we assemble soft plats together with corner blocks and keystones and half straps. This is doing the same sort of principle, but it doesn't have that structural integrity that the way a four by four leg or a two by four or a hog's trough does where I can get away with, you know, three up to four feet with some of those without any cross bracing. And it still is fairly, fairly strong. Let's take a look at this. So there we go, yeah, I'm standing on here. The weight's going through that three quarter inch plywood in through the framing and straight down into this leg. And that is actually, yes, a very, very strong joint once it gets cross bracing and everything else. It also, look at this, it puts it flush with the outside. That's gonna make facing a whole heck of a lot easier. I put all my cross bracing on the inside and now I've already got my flush surface to face things. If I put a two by four or something like this, I have to put another piece of one by along the bottom and all the corners to be able to face it. But this solves that problem. You can also do the math here. I mean, if this is two by four, we've got four and a quarter inches. So we just need to subtract four and a quarter inches of whatever our height is. If we need this to be 18 inches, we're going to uh, cut this four and a quarter inches off of that. So that's gonna be uh, 13 and three quarters of an inch. So that is another legging option for you. I don't really care for it because it's a lot of extra work. It's a lot more pieces. It's a little more complicated to teach and to understand the principles. And there are some flaws if I don't cross brace, if I don't use enough screws on the inside, if I am not really secure with my joints, it, and it requires two by four platforms, which I don't have. But it's one you can consider and use if you're interested. It is a great way to use up all your little scraps of plywood, that's for sure, because you always have lots of weird scraps of leftover three quarter inch plywood that you never know what to do. So it's a great way to get rid of all your plywood. And make sure that I'm flush with that first screw. Always get that first screw flush. You can even reuse these cleats, you know, you cut them once. Got all the holes drilled, it's three quarter inch plywood. It doesn't wear down as much as uh, one by does. It's a reusable material as well. Have a bin full of these cleats and just pull them out. Keep reusing them until they're totally shot.
I've got the exact right number of screws. Just grab the right amount of screws out of that bin. It's been a long time since I've seen this and done this after we did one show that summer with these and I entertained the, uh, the uh, students who came from that program. I said, we're gonna do it my way now because it's faster. And the next show required some rakes and some other things. And the rakes were not just things that you could calculate, but the rakes were legged to an uneven part of the auditorium and uh, irregular flooring in the auditorium. So we didn't have a consistent area to build up off of. And I'm gonna do a video on my quick and dirty way to set up a rake without having to measure and calculate all of the legs and leg positions, although you can do that. And there's one other way of legging up platforms that I, I don't know if I'm gonna to get to today, but that is setting up sort of a truss structure like a pony wall. And I think it's got another name for it that I'm not thinking of right now, but you can build a little stud wall type of thing out of two by four or two by six or whatever material is appropriate for your support. And you can just rest your platforms on that and then stabilize it. So that's another way of legging up platforms. Uh, I'll try to do a separate video on that. But let's take a look at this. Um, I think it was five screws in each position again. It's, not something I really uh, stuck with in my brain and have ever really used again since. And on a short platform, that's pretty strong. And if it was a taller platform and we did cross bracing, that's a, that's a pretty, pretty beefy legging technique. Got to give it kudos for that. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time with more technical theater content.